This brings us to item number 12. Madam Clerk. Item 12 is Long Hollow Retention Facility Radio Tower Divine Word Radio. Recommendation that City Council direct staff to assemble and present pertinent information for the City Council to consider in making an, an informed determination whether the current tower lease may be amended or terminated and the recently constructed tower be substantially modified or completely removed. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on council? Okay. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. I have 12 cards for this item. Uh, Councilman Johnson. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, uh, we've got quite a bit of information here from the city administrator and the city attorney, could we hear from them first? Um, would that be possible, or would we well, like to hear from the public about? Well, um, I, I, I want to remind everyone on council and the public and the administration and everything that, that the action we're taking tonight is to ask staff to gather information for us to make a determination. It's not <laughs> discussing the tower and whether it should be there or anything like that, or the lease, what the lease contains. All it is is asking staff to get information to us. So that's the pertinent discussion that we're going to have tonight. So I need to remind everyone on council and also in the, in the audience that comments have to be held within that context. It's getting us information and not arguing the merits of whether the tower should be there or not. So I want to make sure that's perfectly clear with everyone. Um, so I, you can we can ask. The administrator, if you'd like to give us some information as far as can they get us the information or something like that, is that what you're asking? Yeah, well, I, I just we have gotten a bunch of information. I think even as late as about 5 p.m. today, I think the city attorney uh, handed her opinion down, and uh, I just was wondering if it would be more pertinent to ask them to you know to address that. But um, I'm good either way. But I would like to hear from them eventually, and I do appreciate your comments about having speakers talk about the agenda item itself and not enlarge that to the tower and those issues. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilman Spencer. For those of you in the back of the room, can you hear me? All right. And, and trust me, they, there must have been a, a different net length when these microphones were placed <laughs> decades ago. Amen. So, um, and thank you, um, fellow Council Member Johnson. I appreciate your your um, suggestion and I think it's important as sponsor of, of this item in the agenda workshop that those in the audience um, recognize that those of us on on council as fellow council member Johnson stated we received um, information at, at 515 this afternoon and I'm I'm proud to say that it looks like the request that was made for action at the agenda conference um, has resulted in the, the information, the product that I was hoping that council would be supporting the, my request for. So it is important for you all to know that, again, as that action item was um, written, and Mr. President, may I please read it? Yes. Thank okay. you. Was that City Council direct staff to assemble and present pertinent information for the City Council to consider in making an informed determination whether the current tower lease may be amended or terminated and the recently constructed tower be substantially modified or completely removed. That was the action item as stated, uh, I see that we have a high-paid attorney here, Mr. Fleming. I'm not sure that he expected to come here tonight to speak to something as mundane as should we as a council vote to ask for information. That was as simply stated as it was. And our president, council president, has just reminded everyone that those that do intend to speak must stay to the issue. I know that several North Hill people are here, Mr. President, simply to show support for us as a council 
getting information to make an informed decision. And again, we just received this at 515. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, we Again, I said we have 10 cards for this item, so uh, Councilman Wingate. Uh, yes, I, I'd like to ask the city attorney, I'd like to ask the city attorney if, if we have the right to limit what the people say when they come up here to speak on, on this issue. I believe that limitation is within the council rules unless there's a waiver. Um, the agenda item is posted is as articulated. It's not going to the substance or the merits of the matter. So I would just uh, advise, unless waived, that uh, council um, just com complies with the uh, title of the item. Okay. okay. Our, our first speaker is James Scaminici. speak in favor of the council getting more information regarding the tower so that you can make an informed decision. What I'm going to address are three caveats that you should consider when you ask city staff for documents. The first caveat is that ground truth, if you will, is actually to be found in FAA and FCC documents that city staff do not have. Second, some past and present city staff are apparently complicit in construction of an illegal and unsafe 400-foot tower through acts of omission. And third, Gene Church has apparently engaged in a pattern of deception towards the FAA, the FCC, his professional engineer in Oklahoma, his contractor in Pensacola, and the city. If you turn to Exhibit A, is the 8 August 2011, FAA issues him a construction permit. It's called a determination of no hazard. It is for a 400-foot tower, not a 350-foot tower. It gives the new location a few seconds away from this old tower. And it's set to expire on 8 February 2013. If you turn to exhibit F, as his FAA determination is about to expire, he informs the FAA, quote, construction has started, end quote. Then he says, quote, structure is not at its greatest height yet, end quote. The council has to consider that it is not until January to March of 2014, 12 to 14 months later, that Gene Church actually has an engineered and design from Leo Roberts in Oklahoma. That he has point of to order, point of order. I think this, we're getting into the merits of this issue, and I thought we were going to have a discussion so if you about can, If you can let uh, us know which documents you information. I just said, except an F. Just, I'm saying let us know the documents. Don't give us the actual items that are in the documents. Let us, if, you you have, if you've turned them in and you have them, then, then I, I appreciate that. And these will be part of the stuff that we use to consider it. But if we have the information or if you're giving us the information, that's what we're trying to discuss, not what's actually in them right now, because we don't know. I, you're, you're saying Exhibit F. I don't even know what I'm looking at, because I'm not looking at the substance of the material right now. Yeah. I'm just okay. trying to get information. So I'm glad you gave us the information. But what's actually in it right now, I can't sit here and look at, because I okay. I didn't come here to make a decision okay. about the tower. So I'm Got trying it. to let you know that if you gave us information, if other people gave us information, that's Got great. It. I, I can't exhibit F. I don't know what that means. You know. Okay. We're gonna if if we get the information and if the council decides to take up this issue, then you can come back and say and, and give us all your points that are in the information you gave us, but not at this meeting. This is meeting just to gather information okay. or even ask to gather gather information. Okay. Okay. If I can make one statement. Yes. Go ahead. If you ask the city staff solely for the information that they have. They do not have a complete picture because they do not have the FAA documents and the FCC documents that actually establish a ground truth timeline of what happened and when. I appreciate that, and, and, and 
we can ask city staff for the information they have, but we can ask citizens to provide us information via email or mail for other information that they don't have. So there's no rule that you can't send us information, but all we can do is ask them for information that they have. And we have a city staff now that can do research on the own for us. So we can direct our city staff to go out and look for additional information. Right. Just hopefully, you'll, hopefully you'll direct city staff to read the briefing that's on my blog with all the supporting documentation so you don't have to waste time finding it. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Yeah, thank I you. appreciate it. Thank you. Councilman Spencer? Yes, sir. Um, thanks. I wanted to ask James a question. Uh, yes, sir. One second. So, um, since since you clarified that there is information that is outside the uh, not within access of city staff or might not necessarily be so um, would you please provide for us in a, instead of just on the on the blog um, those resources that you suggest perhaps our staff person because i have a feeling they're going to want to independently verify what information you provided so if those contact um if that contact information can be provided to our um to, to me or council again I, and, and this is where it's confusing i understand is this the item that you presented to us yes sir so i'm just saying I'm pointing out that yeah. our staff will likely be contacting yes. those points of yes. contact directly I'm more than really happy to provide staff with whatever documents they need. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Mike Shanahan? Shanahan. Sheehan? Sheehan, sorry. Yes, my name is Mike Sheehan. I live on Avery Street, Pensacola, just up from the tower in the pond. Uh, I understand what you're looking for tonight, and what I, and I was at a uh, pretty comprehensive presentation that James and Melanie and them they put together, and, and Councilman Spencer uh, was present for. And um, it's uh, you know it's information that they that they put together themselves, and it sounds pretty good and it sounds legit. And what I'm asking the council is to take their information and independently independently verify it, and, um, and come, probably come with the same conclusion. Then we'll talk more more about this at another meeting, but. You definitely need to take a good look at this. From the information I've seen, it it's it covers a lot of mistakes and a lot of I don't even want to get into it, uh, the different things that this guy was trying to do according to the information that James and Melanie and their team um, um, you know brought to the surface. That's really all I have to say right now. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, sir. And uh, I know you can see by the, the stack of papers that Councilman Spencer held up, we we did receive a lot of information today. So. Uh, it's going to be a lot to go through, but uh, I know we're looking forward to it. So, uh, Art Parrish. Thank you, Mr. President, council members. Um, I live in Gulf Breeze, and, but I've worked a lot in Pensacola and with your engineers, building codes department, because for many years my job was to locate cell phone antennas. The secret to that job is really not building towers if you can avoid it. So I would propose building towers only when all else failed. If I could find a tall building, a water tower, and make the antennas work there, then I'm a success. If I have to build a tower, there are very specific procedures Starting with an environmental assessment, the National so, Environmental Protection so I, Act. I, I, again, I, I don't, I don't want to stop you, but again, we're not here to talk about whether we should build the tower or not. No, we're not. We're just I here to talk about that, if we should get information yes. to make a decision about if, that. If, so, yes, uh, I, mean, I, I would like to propose that you can ask questions that I can't. There should be on file an A3 or 2C survey on that tower showing exactly where it is to the second. There should be a certified surveyor saying how tall it is exactly with a laser or the tape drop. You should have that. As far as I can determine, you don't have that. You don't have a lot of things. One of the things we have to do in building a tower or putting up antennas is ask the State Historical Preservation Society if it's going to affect any historical property. Can you see it from there? 
I've had a tower stopped in a horse pasture in Georgia because of a 200-year-old barn. It got approved eventually. But the Historical Society here wasn't even consulted. Ask for the State Historical Society's finding. Did they say this was okay? I think you will find the answer is no. But if you don't know to ask and you just look at your records, you're not going to find anything. Is there any other information that you can think of that would be good to ask for? Uh, yes, permits. Okay. Simple building permits. You can't build a shelter without a permit. You, got, you can't pour concrete without a permit. I can't find it. If they ever got a permit for that shelter, it's invisible. So ask for the permit and check the credentials of anybody who signed the survey. The people we contacted said they may never sign anything like that. They don't exist. Um, that should get you started. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Melanie Nichols. Melanie Nichols, 14 East Gonzales Street. Um, thank you so much. I know you're probably tired of hearing about this Long Hollow Stormwater Pond, but I'm here to tell you how incredibly important this pond is. And if you don't believe me, you need to read all the engineering studies from 1999, 2005, 2008, and then the one that was just published this year. It'll tell you that this pond is responsible for 1,125 acres of stormwater prevention in our city, and it is vital to downtown. We all know that you're going to have to solve these problems uh, the north end of our city because we can't you know, you dig you know a hole in Aragon, you're gonna you're gonna reach water. So we've got to solve these problems, and this is why it's so vital that you do the research and you get this information. And like he said, city staff is not going to have all of this. You're going to have to look at FAA records, FCC records, the State Historical Preservation Association records. <laughs> you're going to have to look, like he said, at the building permits. You're going to have to look at the licenses for its people because one thing that we have found when we did our research is sometimes people sign things that they were not allowed to sign by law because they didn't have a license for it. So we've got about 50 pounds of research. Brian Spencer has seen every bit of it. We have offered you by email the opportunity to sit down with our research team. These are professionals. These are people who did this for a living. These are engineers. These are people a lot smarter than me, okay? So I, I really, I really support this. I want to thank Brian Spencer because he has been with us from the moment we had called him in January when we learned that this was happening. He was on the phone with us. He was getting meetings with us because this is his district. These are our neighborhoods, and we have met as neighborhood groups, and we voted on this. We voted with the North, North Hill Board, Long Hollow Board, East Side. We had members from Aragon there. We had members from Gulf Coast Makers Group, Open Books, First City Art Center, the United Methodist Church. These are all the people that are affected by this pond. It is major. And if I could, I would like for all the people who are in the audience tonight that are supporting this issue, if you would please stand and make yourself known to this council. We care about this issue. We are not going to go away. We're not going to be quiet. We're going to find 50 pounds more of research because these are our homes. This is where we live, and we care about it, and we urge you to care about it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Nichols. <laughs> William Kaplan here. Hello, everybody. It is uh, good to be here. Um, Fortunately, uh, there was a mix-up in my presentation, which I thought really didn't make much difference anyway, in the time that we have to do it. Um, what is important for you to recognize is that the information that we have gathered has been put before editorial boards of the Pensacola News Journal, poured over by very experienced journalists, and you have now had two editorials, both in the Sunday paper and an editorial today, that they're having poured over everything that we have done. Uh, they've made their recommendation. Um, that cannot be uh, ignored. 
Uh, the um, independent news also has been briefed more fully. And again, I say to you uh, that, that Jill Canada Wynn had mentioned that there needs to be a workshop. You need to get this information. You need to get it quickly. Uh, this 10-page uh, thing, I have not gone over, but the fuller report, which is on the website, which was on the map of the stuff that I was going to talk to you about, uh, I don't have, but, but we'll email you that again. But the main thing is, is that we are not stopping or even slowing down because I really don't think that the Pensacola City Council uh, should be trying to investigate something. You have to deal with subpoena power. You have to deal with all sorts of other things. We are pressing hard, hard, hard in every way with community groups, with law enforcement agencies, with everyone that we can interest in this. And this is going to come and this is going to slap you very, very hard, I believe. And I think that the city council would be best served in trying to prepare for the healing that is going to be needed before this is over. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Ed Fleming. Thank you, Mr. President. Brian, I don't think I've ever sent you a bill, so how do you know whether I'm expensive or not? I just heard. The, uh, I'm going to limit my, my comments not to the merits. I, I was ready to address the merits, as Mr. Uh, as Councilman Spencer thought I was. But the, what, what I would like to address is, you know, this request for information. I mean, there's four allegations that they've that they've made that have anything to do with City Council. Uh, I mean, you're not the FAA, you're not the FCC. If there was any problems with the FAA, or FCC, I think they're plenty ad adequate to handle that without uh, you trying to serve as their board as well as the. Uh, governing board, the legislative board for the city of Pensacola. One of the allegations, and, and let me let me ask, uh, there, there's thousands who support and listen to Catholic Radio. Do we have supporters here? Catholic Radio, would you stand? Just, just to give you an idea that you know, you, you, this is not one side of an issue. I mean, this is a community service that is, is well supported. Number one, they, they said the, the tower was illegally constructed. Now that's totally within the city's purview to to ask, you know, was it properly permitted? I would ask that you limit your investigation to these these issues that are city council issues. Was it properly permitted? Uh, that doesn't require any more investigation than talking to your permitting office. That the tower is unsafe. Once again, you have uh, city engineers, you have the city permitting office, you have a very capable and competent uh, city uh, official, building official. Uh, and Bill Weeks, one who has a reputation among contractors as being very, very tough, uh, one who has a reputation among other building officials as being a go-to guy to answer questions that are tough questions. The number three is that, uh, that the tower prevents the property from using, being used for flood control. That's an engineering issue which you have an answer to in your packet of information right there from the senior flood engineer. So that, I would ask that you limit your investigation to things that you have right within your purview there. Number four, last but not least, that the, uh, that the tower, uh, by being removed and replaced, as required by the contract that you entered with Divine Word more than three years ago, that that uh, contract be, um, uh, is, is either proper or improper, that's merely a legal opinion from your very capable city attorney. I would ask that those four items would be the items that you uh, limit your investigation to and that you don't try to get into uh, the FAA's business or the FCC's business. These same folks have made complaints with those, those two agencies. Let those agencies handle that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fleming. Uh, Jim Church? Gerald Weaver. Okay. Peggy Inslow. I don't have any. Pull it down. Pull it down. 
Thank you. I have any more technical information to offer. I just have a house in Long Holland, and it's been flooded twice, 2014 and last year. Sorry, 2012 and then last year. It's, it's a dangerous situation when water can come down that hill and hit your house so hard that it moves it on the piers. That's water over engine on every car on that street. If people were standing in the street, they would be knocked down and drowned. You're standing in your living room, nothing's wrong, and a few minutes later you've got 34 inches of water in the house. We're, we're I just wanted to talk about, about how dangerous that is and how much we need something done to stop this. There are a lot of people that are affected by this in the same way that I am. And whatever information that you can gather to try to help us to change the situation, we'd appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you very much. Jennifer Colley. Jennifer Colley. Michelle Mackwell. McNeil. McNeil. McNeil, I'm sorry. It's hard when you have to shout. Council and staff, thank you for listening to us tonight. I just wanted to, um, I'm, as you know, the president of Long Hollow Neighborhood Association, and I am asking that you support the recommendation. Uh, we um, have a tremendous stormwater issue in the whole city, as you know. It's really, really important to all of us, and this Long Hollow Pond is ground zero for the city in terms of that. We ask that you support and look over the recommendations. I think one of the things you may want to look at is the Baskerville Donovan study that was done by the city asked for in 2000, 2001, that um, one of their findings was to remove the tower and expand the pond. You can look at um, FDOT when they did the mitigation after Hurricane Ivan. And if you look at their plans, they all are on the south side, the south portion of the pond, because there was a radio tower in the north portion of the pond. Um, and I would also recommend that you look at the most recent um, Atkins report, which indicated that they thought, actually, we needed tremendously more pond um, work. I know that none of this will solve the problems we had at that huge, you know, the last flood. But I think that we need to do um, what we can to solve this problem and do the low-hanging fruit. This is land we already owned and um, versus all of the three studies that were done by the city of Pensacola were very expensive, $12 million, $60 million, $70 million. This is something that we own and that we can work with. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ms. Dugasan? Ms. Dugasan? Thank you, Council. I appreciate the opportunity to share some thoughts with you about why this needs to move forward. <clears throat> First off, uh, Mr. Spencer, when you read your um, recommendation, you used tonight the word pertinent. I thought at the agenda meeting you struck that to say beyond pertinent so that it did not become a subjective review of information, but that it would be all available known information. I did suge suggest that. Uh, and was that not the actual motion? Um, Has it moved forward? I do not know how it was recorded. It, 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 that's not the motion right now, but you can obviously uh, um, amend it. Yes, okay. I would be amending that. To I, I just felt that that was a, a very specific change that you made and, and would free staff up to do what they found as opposed to selecting and editing. Secondly, um, I believe if you're going to ask for information, you should make certain that you include a request for the timeline and contents of all known communications to all government and private entities listed on any and all governmental and body governmental body or agency applications, reviews, and or reports regarding this tower from its inception. The records of all oil and our electronic transmissions available should also be requested. I also think that you should ask them to review all present and past employees and our contractors of the city regarding any comments, reviews, approvals, opinions, or actions either between any of the previously mentioned bodies and individuals or themselves as directed by others or initiated as a course of their job responsibility. I ask this because we've had a lot of suggested impropriety in some of the um, actions move forward and in some of the evidence that has um, been presented both by professional and non-professional members of the, um, the media. 
and I believe that if you could have your staff fully prepare a report, they would educate themselves as well as yourself to process issues that may, we may want to see as a result of this that need to be corrected. And if all you do is gather a bit of information without a thorough review back to the beginning, you may not understand some of the casual processes that may have led to what appear to be, to some people, improprieties, but may have been standard practice of this city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hussain. Okay, that was our last speaker. Um, any further comment from council? Okay, uh, so uh, Councilman Spitzer, can you clarify your motion just so we can make sure that we have the change that you want to make? Well, um, I certainly appreciate um, Ms. Dimbasan's um, detailed um, suggestion. I'm just trying to... I believe, that at the, at the, if I remember correctly from the agenda conference, we took out pertinent and just put all. That is what we did. Yeah. And so, uh, if you want me to read it, I have it right here. Um, the recommendation that the City Council direct staff to assemble and present all information for the City Council to consider in making an informed determination whether the current tower lease may be amended or terminated and the recently constructed tower be substantially modified or completely removed. So that is the motion, and do we have a second for that? Second. Um, yeah. Okay, Councilman Mary, okay. All right, we do have a motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Administrator? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, since uh, Councilman Johnson had, had asked uh, if I would speak, and I think he also wanted the city attorney to speak on this, I just want to, again, keeping uh, to, to the item, um, but I want to comment on what Mr. Fleming said, and I, I think it's, if you, and also to let the public know what information was provided for you today, um, both around noon and I think uh, later in the day, in response to this uh, coming onto the agenda on Monday, and that is um, of, of the four items mentioned, permits, safety, flood control, and, and the legal opinion, you did receive information that addresses those four things. Um, regarding the permits and the safety, there was a timeline of events related to the construction and the permitting of the tower provided by Mr. Weeks um, to address the flood control and the value of um, of the property with regard to the, the Long Hollow Basin. That was addressed by, by Atkins in a commentary on the report that I believe um, Ms. McNeil referenced. And then you had the legal opinion that was provided by uh, the city attorney uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion on council? Okay. Uh, please vote. Motion passes seven to zero.